Pat Soundbites Unplugged Podcast, along with Hit Music Radio, The Fox. And man, do I got a fantastic show for you today. Look at what's behind me and look at these beautiful couple, this adorable couple, right <laughs> next to me. The amazing Claire Bowen and Rob Brandon Robert Young, better known as Bowen and Young. They're coming to Daryl's house on April 7th. I better see your butt there because they're certainly going to rock the world oh my god thank you for your time today guys oh man thank you for having us it's our pleasure it's lovely to meet you i mean this is a true love you know as i wrote here looking at my notes people are saying so what are you doing today i said i got this couple is a role model listen to me clearly everybody out there of what the true meaning of love is and they embrace it every day in their personal lives and they translate it into their music how's that Does that make sense Man, that makes perfect sense. Thanks, dude. Yeah. <laughs> but also, there's no such thing as a coincidence, and I tell everybody that all the time. I mean, good things happen to great people, and your story of, you know, just uh, Claire's about to hit the Bridgestone Arena, and a guy bails out uh, 24 hours, and then Brandon comes along, and um, ba bang! <laughs> uh, who would who would who would ever thought? But I mean, that's how. That's how life is um, sometimes, and uh, it, it leads to uh, bigger and better things. And obviously, you guys are married. You got a great thing going on, and uh, you got some awesome music. Um, you know, it just, it's, it's just incredible. I, I love stories like this. And the ups and downs and some of the hurdles that you've both been through, um, Claire, by yourself as a cancer survivor that I read, and we're glad that that is all in the past, and we're glad that you are here. And then this house break in, which led to dangerous love, da right? Dangerous love. Um, yeah. my yeah. goodness. Um, we need to all listen to your story, uh, personally and musically, because I don't think we we don't do enough about it until something happens, and then we're all mm -hmm. loving and hugging and going. But when sure. things happen to you that affect you, as mm -hmm. You guys have been through. You uh you you need to embrace it and show it and, and and you do I think you do a great job about it. All right, so I'm gonna shut up and let you guys talk. So I'll start with Claire. Um what did you think when this guy shows up at the uh, Brigstone Arena and uh goes in your dressing room and says, How you doing? I'm Robert. Or, I'm Brandon. I keep saying Robert. <laughs> I'm Brandon and uh we're gonna rock this lady. Let's do this. <laughs> He was very polite, uh, and I thought I I was really um, quite taken aback by how brave he was because being given just a few hours to learn a song that so many people loved to sing in front of, like, a Bridgestone crowd, he, he could have said no, but he didn't. He said yes, and then when he rolled up, he sang the song through with me twice, and I thought 
I thought this guy must be an actor, like somebody's pulling my leg because he sang the song to me um, in a very unassuming way, but it was just really honest. Uh, and I was uh, called out to, to go and do the show. And we all walked out there and I was standing at the side of the stage um, where you walk up the steps to like in the main Bridgestone room um, and really scared, didn't, had never really sung with a band before that wasn't just on camera. Um, so I was terrified <laughs> and I felt this person come up behind me and I think you, you touched me on the arm or something. Oh. Um, and it was Brandon and he said, hey, I know you're really nervous, but you're, you're going to be great and they're going to love you. It's going to be okay. And it was the kindest thing anybody had said to me in a really, really long time. Um, and he came up and did the show. It was incredible. Everybody loved him. And then he left the stage. I finished the set and I went to, to find him uh, and he'd gone on tour with John Hyatt. <laughs> he had to leave that night. <laughs> so we kept in touch via text and uh, eventually started writing together about three months later when you got back. Mm -hmm. um, and the, I, we tried really hard not to fall in love, but it didn't work. <laughs> well i mean how cool is that that you know it's only what 20 30 40 thousand people you got this it's okay and i'm sure he's looking at this hot blonde going oh thank you jesus this is perfect <laughs> i'm sure she can sing or she wouldn't be here so we're gonna make this raw i look at you too you're today's vince gill and amy grant i mean you're the 21st oh. century americana Plus and then some, but uh, I I love that whole uh, that whole story. That's pretty cool. I mean, Superman comes in, does the thing, taps you, maybe a little hug and kiss, and out the door. And you're like, what just happened? Where did this guy go? But it's cool oh, that man. you were able to uh, keep in touch and hook up and uh, do some songwriting together. And then I read that uh, Superman here uh, is not only a good looking guy and does the right thing, but he proposes. On, on the Ryman floor? Are you kidding me? How many people can say that? It was pretty amazing. We were playing um, the early and the late shows. During Christmas time in December, they bring the, the, the Grand Old Opry back to the Ryman from the Opry House. And so we were playing the early show and the late show on a Friday night. And so we played the early show and I had the ring in my pocket. And then we went up to our dressing room after we played during the intermission in between shows. And uh, I had a bit of a decoy gift because I didn't want her to know, you know, that I was about to propose. And while she was opening opening this gift, which was, um, uh, we had an artist friend of ours write out the lyrics of the very first song that we wrote together. And I had it framed. And so while she was opening that up, I got down on one knee. And when she looked up, I asked her to marry me. And in true Australian form, she said, what do you reckon? <laughs> I looked up and I'm like, what are you doing down there? Oh, okay. <laughs> but it was pretty amazing. And and so after she said yes, we we went uh, and made a quick uh, FaceTime phone call to her family back in Australia, who I had already asked her parents' permission. And then um, my, my parents, we made a quick Zoom or a FaceTime to them. And then we went downstairs and, and Jason Isbell and Amanda Shire were on stage. And so we we got to watch them perform their set and then we went out and uh, played the second show and Claire announced on WSM radio that we were engaged and yeah. it, was cool. it was really cool. Yeah. Uh, good for you, man. That is so cool. I don't know if uh, Keith Urban and uh, Nicole did it that way, but you know what, <laughs> what, what, <laughs> whatever works. I mean, that, that is awesome. Talk to me about the songwriting. I love Dangerous Love. I love Skeletons. That really yeah. caught my eye that I wanted to hear more. I wrote down, what, Helpless? Oh, Darling? I mean, I'm like, wow, I got to hear more of these guys. I love it. How does the songwriting uh, process start? I mean, um, when do you guys have this thought while you're cooking breakfast and Brandon grabs a guitar and says, hold on to that. Let's, let's work on that. How does that all go? Sometimes it goes like that. It's always... <laughs> <laughs> you're cooking and he's got the guitar pretty much yeah okay. um, it usually just starts with well it always starts with an idea um whether it's whether the idea is a melody or a story or just a title mm. um but we kind of will you know brand will be writing something on one side of the house and i'll be on the other side and i can hear him and i'll start humming along to it and come in and it's i don't know they kind of just 
sometimes they just write themselves. Um, yeah, and, and I would say Claire is r really, really good at sort of the the seed of an idea, the nucleus sort of, the, you know, it might be that it might be the seed of the idea or it might just be a title, but she's really, really good at coming to the table with really interesting titles. And so, um, and I would even say over the last year or so, a lot of the songs have been coming just through, you know, sort of, she has an idea and I'm just start finger picking on the guitar and, and then, you know, it sort of just starts to take shape. So, I mean, but, you know, every day is different, you know, and it depends sometimes if we're writing with other people, you know, their fingerprints or their, their instincts or their moves are, are a little different than ours. And so, you know, sometimes you're leading and sometimes you're following. Um, Ultimately, that's how our music is sort of developed. It's, Brandon's a really emotional guitar player. He's got a really beautiful style that I haven't really heard anybody else do. Um, and it's, it's just so beautiful. So all of our music can be played in a small venue, like we're going to play at Daryl's house uh, or in an arena. We've done, we opened for Sugarland in arenas and did exactly the same. Sort nice. Of style. Nice. Um, and it's, I don't know, it's just to have music that transcends from a really large venue like that with a full band to a beautiful intimate venue uh, where it's just us and a guitar. It's, it makes you, I don't know, it's just really lovely and versatile. It means that you can do anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. A, it's a lot of fun. And we really do enjoy playing both sides. Uh, you know, when you're looking at like playing intimate, you know, listening rooms and you get to be, you know, six feet from the audience and, and, and telling stories and interacting, um, you know, and just doing an acoustic, the two of us, I, uh, is magic but then also to get to go play arenas when you're opening up for you know some larger artists it's it's um it's a, a different thing but it's also really really cool so you know we don't take it for granted anytime we get to be in front of people and get to play our songs for them you know it's really truly a dream come true and so we're just we're thrilled that we get to to do it together and that we get to see the world together and we get to meet new people together and um man we just feel really really fortunate so it's just it's it's really great yeah i mean you're loving what you do and then you got your partner that you love so when you hit the road you're together i mean i've been married for 35 years i love my wife don't get me wrong i don't know if i could go on the road with her but i <laughs> certainly would miss her i know i i you know the minute you go away for uh, a day or two or three or whatever. I mean, we're FaceTime and we're calling each other and figuring out what's going on. And it's always, you can't wait to get home. You know, it's great yeah. to be in Vegas or wherever, but it's like, I can't wait to get to my own bed and be home and see right. what's cooking. You just, you just miss that. Can't wait to go. Excited going out with the guys. And then you go, Oh no, this guy snores. This one doing this. This yeah. one doing that. I'm like, I miss <laughs> my 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 cat. I you know all that stuff. So it's good that, that it works for you guys. I don't want to dwell too much on dangerous love, but I know the story. I've read about it. Um, um, I come from emergency service background, so um, okay. I'm a past fire chief. I'm okay. a retired guy in charge of our nine one one center. Um, I have a lot of things that are stuck with me um, that from responding or from answering 911 calls. And I can't imagine uh, what you guys went through for our listeners to know of somebody breaking in your house and uh, just not stopping, not there to steal something, trying to kick your door down. And you're, you know, going, but, you know, we got to do what we have to do. And mm -hmm. uh, Thankfully, the police showed up and, and apprehended this, uh, I'll just say scumbag or whatever we want to call him. But uh, it just I'm sure it just built your bond for love of both of you and the dog. I believe it was yeah. the dog they involved yeah. that yeah. Uh, that, um, you know, it's uh, you're going to do what you I know. I my wife, we would do whatever we need to do to protect right. ourselves. Um, but, yeah, it's a crazy world that we live in today. But you write the song, and it's a beautifully written song. And there's some; it's very powerful. There's some cool uh, lyrics in there about the devil and demons and angels. And um, um, I, I say it's an inspiration, and it's probably a little therapeutic for you guys to do it. And it probably helps by talking more about it because I'm sure there are others out there that have been through something like this, and 
you know, it, it's a it's a way of getting it out there and sharing what you guys yeah. have been through. Yeah. yeah. Ultimately, it's become a vehicle for us to say to people, like, if there's anybody out there who is dealing with something that they can't carry by themselves anymore, whether it's something that happened, something someone did, uh, the, the greatest gift you can give yourself and the people you love is to go and talk to someone about it um, and get it off your chest and work through it if you need to. Um, that's what we did. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's a pretty confronting thing, having someone come into your house and realize that they're not, I mean, it's awful in the first instance to have someone come and take things, but that's not what he was there for. He was, he was there to, to hurt us um, and tried to, did, you're right. He tried to beat down our bedroom door and the police got there in the nick of time. Um, so it, it, it's, it's this awful thing that we've tried to, we've had to move through with a lot of trauma therapy mm. and hopefully out of something dreadful, we have friends who have said, we've never thought about something like that happening. And now we've thought about it and we've people upping their security systems, like silly little things like that, that might prevent it from happening to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And just being aware of your own surroundings um, and having a plan. If something like that ever did happen, not that we ever thought it would, but we had talked about it and, we kind of went into autopilot when he broke in and did exactly what we said we would do. And I think that's what kept us alive for long enough for the police to get there. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, yeah, if, if we can, if we can talk about it in order to sort of prevent it from happening to other people or help other people through a hard time, then I guess it was worth it. Yeah, for sure. No question about it's it. It's a weird one. <laughs> yeah, But it's also, you know, it's, you know, exactly what Claire said, but it's also, a reminder to you know tell the people you love you love them and and Absolutely. make those phone calls and send those text messages and spend the time and you know and, and don't take don't take today for granted because you just don't know what tomorrow will bring and you know life's too short not to say i love you you know right. and so that's you know uh, one of the things that i've taken away from it and i you know while i am uh I am grateful for the song and I'm grateful for um, the catharsis of the song and, and our opportunities to be out in front of people and tell people and hopefully, you know, help them and give them a vehicle to say, look, man, if you need help, go get it. You know, I, I had never really done much therapy up until this point, but I've done quite a bit of trauma therapy since, and um, it really does help. And it's helped me because I couldn't sleep. I just, I mean, I just couldn't sleep for, I don't know, three, three weeks. Yeah. Three weeks you didn't sleep at all. <laughs> it was crazy. And so, you know, you just have to go speak with somebody who knows how the human brain works and how the chemicals in your body work and, and help you sort of work through all of the sort of um, things that you've experienced. And it really has helped me a lot. So, no, I totally yeah. agree. I mean, I'm a, I'm a dinosaur. I've been in the emergency service uh, business for, you know, almost 40 years. And back mm -hmm. in the day when you went to calls or did CPR, mm -hmm. you know, it's just part of the deal. And then mm -hmm. over the years, they created post-traumatic uh, stress groups, you know, that you had a bad call. Right away, we get everybody together and we talk about it and just get it out, get the tears out, get the crying out. We did what we needed to do as best as we can. And, mm -hmm. you know, life, there's life and then there is death. Unfortunately, that's just the way it goes. And mm -hmm. uh, even in the 911 world, people are going to die. We are going to die. Um, you mm -hmm. can only do your best, but you need to get it out. You can't carry these burdens and these demons with you or you will never sleep. I, I don't know if I would sleep. I mean, you can have the best alarm system in the world, which you guys had in a system, yeah. but I'd yeah. be going, I'd be sleeping with my, my wife next to me, the animals and two guns. And every yeah. time I hear a crack or I hear a, anything, I'd be jumping out of bed. And thank God we have the resources there are that you can go out and get help. I always said, you know, if I went to a therapist, by the time they heard my story, they'd be on the couch and I'd be giving the, <laughs> they'd be going, yeah, this guy's a nut job. I mean, he needs help. But uh, in, in all actuality, no, it's uh, not like that. And, and it's glad, and it's glad that you're able to um, 
sing, uh, put it together in a song and, and, and talk about it and get it out there. And uh, I think it's, it's beautiful. As I mentioned, skeletons, I'm a lyric type of guy. I like to just crank on the, the song and try to figure it out. And I know it's always under the interpretation of what I think the song is. When I think of skeletons, I thought maybe like you're putting the past behind you, you know, and doing, going into a fresh new start. But what can you share with me what your thoughts were when you came up with the song? Well, it was actually one of our dearest friends, Amy Mariello, who's an incredible songwriter and artist. Um, she came over with the idea and we've been meaning to write together for ages. We, we actually, I mentioned Sugarland earlier. We, we were on the same tour with them and that's how we became friends. And she's just absolute powerhouse vocalist and amazing writer. So Amy came over with this idea and we were immediately like, that is incredible. Um, and it, it's really lovely that it speaks to you because it's everyone should like we want everyone to be able to see themselves in our music um it's like music is a universal language so whatever people's skeletons are um it's based around the idea that it's it's really wonderful to love somebody for their strengths and what they're good at and all the shiny things you know but to love someone for their weaknesses and in spite of the things that they've been through um that's something else altogether uh, and it's very much our story when we first got together or were sort of threatening to <laughs> mm -hmm. I was we, we had both we'd both been through the ringer with you know other people before and I was like I've just been through something really terrible please don't come over here because I don't want to get any of it on you so just stay over there and Brandon was like that's okay I'm a train wreck as well um, and it was actually through the things that we've been through that we bonded mm -hmm. yeah yeah and you know you, you life's not perfect you know and you love through the imperfections and for the imperfections and you know i i just that when she when amy came over and said i just have this idea and i think it will work great for you guys and she just said your skeletons don't scare me and we both were just like looked at each other and like Ooh, i yeah. like that that is so we cool have, we have to write that and we wrote it that day yeah. and uh, and then when we were, you know, selecting songs for, for the record, um, we basically put together a list of like 40 songs or at least 40 songs mm -hmm. that we sent over to our producer, Sean McConnell, before we ever started recording. And just, you know, when you hire a guy like Sean to produce your record, you know, you want his fingerprints on it. You want his instincts on it. And so we just sent him songs and just let him go through them at his pace and when he listened to that song, he's like, we have to, we have to record that song. And so, you know, it was a confirmation. We felt like we should record it, but it was a confirmation when Sean, who is so well-respected and so talented said, we have to record that song. We were like, absolutely, let's go. Um, so we're, we were thrilled. That was the first song we got to release and uh, for people to hear, you know, of the new record. And so uh, it's just a lot of fun to play live. That's, that's for sure. So when so is it so when's the record actually officially come out? Has it, is it out already, or is it you you got a date in pl uh, on uh, planning? It'll be out later on this year. We're just we're actually waiting on our release date right now. We're really okay. excited, <laughs> but um, it's it's coming soon. We're yeah. just we, I, we I'm itching. The, I'm a guy who plays new music. I I want more Bowen in the lens. Oh, and yo, don't worry, there's more. It's <laughs> coming your way. Yeah. I like it because that's where I I found my niche in life after playing all the hits forever. I just said, there's, you know, there's I, I get I was getting now it's calm calm down like 20 CDs a week from folks I have no idea. Plus, you know, the regular national artists that you know that's what you guys do. You create music. And I just felt there was no vehicle for new music that, you know, and it's opened the door that I'm friends with Billy Gibbons and Alice Cooper and every band that I grew up with that were my heroes. And now I, I, I'm not a musician, but I, I just, it's like, wow. Um, and, and I do the five, four and all. So I go to Daryl's house and I hang out with you guys and you roll five dice. And if you roll five of a kind in three rolls, I play the entire album. On my radio show, and you want to see everybody goes. We got Paul Rogers, a band company, had a 16 track live album. We're rolling the dice, he said. <laughs> uh, Billy Gibbons has his own dice, and you know, Three Doors Down and Cheap Trick, and a lot of independent oh. artists. And like, oh my god, thank you so much for the opportunity and playing 
our track. I had one guy win it so far in two and a half years, Jesse Triplett from my great band, friends of mine, Collective Soul. We awesome. went backstage June 4, 2019. They were with uh, the Jim Blossoms. And yep. Jesse rolls the dice and gets a we got a pair of ones and, and two fours. And then the second roll, he got nothing. And then he got three more four. He kept the fours. And you thought we won the Super Bowl and uh, the World Series were jumping up and down. And <laughs> I, I loved them, guys. And then my next radio show, I played their entire album, which is called Blood. It's a great album. And then I went to see him in Long Island and I gave him a gold shadow box saying, you're the first winner of the oh, Pat okay. Calamari 5 for it all. I mean, I had Paul Brown just go, hey, look over there. And he turned the dice like for six. He had five sixes. And I'm like, Paul, it don't matter. I would play. I always play a double shot. So I would yeah. certainly play Dangerous Love and, and Skeletons. But if you roll the dice on Friday, April 7th, and you guys get five of a kind in three rolls. Well, then I got to play your entire album, which I love. It just, it's a, I just wanted to do more, you know? I, I just, it. I'm like, I got to do something different to really get the, the word out for new music. So uh, that's, Thanks. that's my crazy story. Thank you, man. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to practice, uh, you know, we'll practice <laughs> our dice rolling between yeah. <laughs> Well, I've had Mark Slaughter from the band Slaughter. He lives in Nashville. Yeah. Uh, he says, I'm from Vegas. Give me those. I played crap. You know, everybody wants to. I didn't want to. I didn't think I'd be the dice guy. I'm just was trying to be do something crazy and different. I love your music. I love your harmonies. I got my Johnny Cash shirt on because I read something about John Carter Cash and you, uh, Brandon. And you got a chance to work on a finish Johnny Cash project? It was pretty amazing, yeah. Um, wow. John Carter, is, uh, John Carter and his wife, Anna Cash, are, are dear friends of ours. And um, and we, we get a chance to hang out when we're not on the road. And um, I was over on the Cash property uh, with John one day, and we were riding around on the 4 by 4 just... Uh, you know, they've got a bunch of animals on their land. So we were out there feeding like the alpacas and the chickens and the, and just, you know, drinking coffee and driving around. And he said, I was, I'm working on this, this project. Uh, I discovered all of these, these um, writings that my, my dad had, you know, done on hotel napkins and little pieces of paper. And he found them, he found probably 2000 different pieces. Wow. Uh, in different, you know, stuffed in books and, and cabinets and things. And he pared that down to probably two or 300 that he felt like the world needed to, to see. And so they, they put out a, a poetry book uh, called Forever Words, Johnny Cash Forever Words, of some of those writings. And then they were doing a companion project, which was um, taking some of those and putting them to music. And so uh, everybody from Chris Cornell to Brad Paisley to Casey Musgraves, um, Willie Nelson, Chris Christopherson, all these interesting, amazing people got involved. Um, and he said, you know, um, is that something you'd be interested in taking a look at? And I was like, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we went back to the house and he brewed another pot of coffee and brought these two big, thick manuals out, set them on the kitchen table. And we sat and drank coffee and he goes, look through those and see if anything resonates with you. So found a, there was one piece that Johnny had written to June in uh, September of 1982 called Little Patch of Grass. And at the top of the paper, it said, to June with all my love, John. And I said, man, this, this is really beautiful. I'd love to take a look at this. And he said, okay, you know, take it home. And, and so we, we kind of put our heads together and worked it out and worked it out and worked it out and worked it out and reworked it out. And then um, got together with John Carter and, you know, eventually when we had it to a place where we felt like it was in the right place, we went into the cash cabin and recorded it with a band and it ended up on the record. So really, truly a, um, amazing, amazing. Once in a lifetime experience, right? Talk yeah. about walking in the right spot. Yeah. And Johnny Cash is, you know, my all time number one sort of musical hero. So to get to, to take his words and put them to music was, um, really uh, a high thrill now who goes grocery shopping i know you're married to scarlet there you know the <laughs> hit show 
uh, of Nashville. Does she have to put the baseball cap on and the sunglasses? And, and, and she goes, Brandon, go get the groceries because I'm going to get surrounded by paparazzi and autographs. How is that crazy? For, is that really going on in your life, uh, Claire, anymore? Or are you recognizable? Or uh, Brandon's got to go, you hang out with the crowd. I'll get the rest of the groceries. Just, he does the grocery shopping. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you cook. <laughs> I do. I cook. Um, I, I really enjoy grocery shopping. It just it, it's really nice when people come say hi, but it ends up taking about an hour and a half longer than it's than it should. So I don't go grocery shopping. <laughs> I mean, we didn't have to worry about it during the pandemic because we just had groceries delivered. Yeah. But now, now that things are sort of opened back up again, so I'm back on uh, grocery duty. But I, I don't mind it. We've got a we've got a couple. Kroger's yeah. around here that are that are nice to walk through, and you always find something that you don't need, but you know you got to pick it up anyway. Oh, she, my wife does not let me go. We didn't. That's not on the list. Oh, stop it! You like, come on. No, I gave you a bunch of things for no more than like a hundred dollars. Well, now today, five items is a hundred dollars. Yeah. Are you, are, are you getting any like, phone calls, clear for any more roles in the uh, acting world? Driving I you am. crazy? Like, no, I got a career with. My husband. Yeah, it's really nice to like to be able to um, pick and choose what I do. Uh, and music has been. I mean, we the Nashville show ended, and we toured my first record. Mm -hmm. um, and we, gosh, that took sixteen months to tour the world with. And then I went back to Australia, did a series, and then came back, and the pandemic hit. So we've just been riding away, and I've done a couple of films since then. But um, just having fun doing what I really, really love, which is music and, and getting to sing live with people. And I, I really enjoy film. I love telling stories. Um, but it's just been so great to get the music part feeling completely right because we were solo artists for so long. And I didn't, I had always wanted us to be a, a duo. It's what we both wanted. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it took a whole bunch of stuff happening to to have that just for us to put our foot down and be like, no, this is what's happening now. And to, to have this part right makes every other aspect of my life so much happier. I love it. Well, you can <laughs> go to their website at Bowen, BowenYoung.com and check out all the dates. April 5th, they start all over again at uh, Ramhead on stage down in uh, Annapolis. And then they head up this way and they're going to be – Friday night, April 7th at Daryl's House. You can get your tickets, daryl'shouse.com or 845-289-0185. Uh, I know there's a VIP experience, too. You can hang out with these guys. Is that? Yeah. Am I right with that? A little Q&A, right. hang out, talk about uh, their excitement. And I got to get down to Nashville. I haven't been down in a while, and it's crazy that I interview so many rock stars that are in Nashville now. And I'm like, you know, how do you go to the store? And they're like, they're not looking for me. They're looking for, you know, uh, as I mentioned, Keith Urban or uh, <laughs> Brad Paisley. I wear the baseball cap. I put my hair in a ponytail. Nobody even recognizes me. But it's funny how Nashville has really become the music city of USA compared to, you know, what New York used to be or L.A. Everybody has... And the songwriting and the talent down there has to be over the top. Yeah, it's it's, it's an amazing place to live. Yeah, um, we love it. This town has been really good to us and, uh, you know, sort of opened its arms to us. And we have incredible friends here and collaborators, people that we consider family. And, um, you know, and that's, a, that's an amazing thing because my family lives, you know, four and a half hours away. Claire's family lives 9,000 miles away in Australia. So, you know, for us to have the people in our lives here in Nashville, um, you know, that we truly consider family and, and we love and they love us. It's just, uh, man, it's, it's a great city. It's a great city full of great people. There you go. Well, any other thing that I can help promote besides this one thing right behind me? I love the picture. I love your harmonies, guys. Your harmonies are amazing. Just breathtaking. Thank you. Thank you. And we're just we're really excited to come play Daryl's house and come to see everybody. I've never been there before, so I'm stoked. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, it's just lovely to after the pandemic and everything to get to do these shows. Like it's never lost on us how lucky we are to get to do what we love. Um, and we're just excited to see everyone again. Well, yeah. I'm sure your first show after the pandemic was probably very, uh, you know, 
pinching moment like we're doing this yeah. again and feeling the energy again. I knew my first show back at Daryl's, I didn't know if we would ever do it again or if there would be such a thing of a meet and greet like or social distance. But I'm hugging everybody at the, the restaurant, you know, the bartender's like, we're back, thank goodness. And in today's crazy world, you know, the incident in Nashville yesterday, you know, I said to Edgar Winter, the great Edgar Winter, you know, you could go to the Daryl's house with 100 strangers or 200 strangers or a, a Bridgestone Arena with 20, 30,000. And for an hour or two, we're the greatest friends ever. I don't even know these people, but we music brings us all together. And if we can only carry that out at the end of the show, and, you know, I tell my, well, young adults now, open the door, help people out, be kind, show a little love to people. The world would be such a better place, right? Yep. I agree. Yep. That's what we want to do with our music. It's it's about bringing people together. If people don't have words for the stuff that they're feeling, maybe we can help them find them. Um, it's, you know, yep. it's finding finding a window in. That's all people have got to do. Um, it is for everybody. So that's kind of the, the most fun part of what we do yep. is just filling a room full of love and understanding and everyone's the best friends by the time they leave. <laughs> there you go. And music heals all and puts us all together. Guys, yeah. thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed the crazy conversation that, that I have here with you yeah, guys. You. Wonderful, man. Yeah, thank you for having us. Thank we really so appreciate it. It doesn't get any better than this. Go check these guys out. Get your tickets today. Come check me out. I'll definitely be there. They're going to be rolling the dice. We're going <laughs> to videotape it and see if they can do it. And if not, well, we're going to just keep rocking and playing <laughs> their music. Keep it right here on Pat Soundbites Unplugged Podcast or Hit Radio The Fox. Thanks, man.